Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. What have I done? I... I didn't want... It was like a dream. Quick. I... I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. Thank 
the knife. I've got to get rid of it. Out of order. Don't move. You are under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. And that's how my story ends. The cop, who thought at first that I was injured, found the body in the stall. I'll be spending the rest of my days rotting in some prison somewhere. I'll never know exactly what happened to me that cold night in January, in the toilet of an East End restaurant. Because as far as everyone else is concerned, I'm just a killer. Girl, how'd you do that? I was raised in a Shaolin monastery, and the monks taught me all the evil secrets of Kung Fu. What? No shit? Man, Tyler, you don't believe anything I tell you. Yo, nothing about you surprises me now, woman. You want to go again? I'd worked good and hard on the investigation, done everything Carla had asked. Now I just wanted to relax and play some b-ball. And also sell a little score I had with Jeffrey. Right. Okay, here's the rules. First to score 10 points wins the game and $200. That cool for you? You can kiss your money goodbye. We'll see. Let's do it. Since I'm such a good sport, you start with the ball.
The more I see you play, Jeffrey, the more I think you should take up chess. Yes! Now that was pure poetry in motion. He hits the lane, he drives and he scores. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our play of the day. Yo, you D up pretty good for a white cop. You ain't so bad yourself. You got some game. Maybe I should have mentioned I did some ball at college. So, as for the hundred, it's game over, man. You're a real SOB, Tyler. I know, and that's why you like me, Jeffrey.
There's the hangar. The base seems abandoned. Looks like we got here before the Oracle and the Purple Clan. They're not far away. I sense their presence. Be careful. I need you. If I'm not back in 15 minutes, go back where we came from. Bogart will protect you. The cold went away just like it had come, in silence, as if the indigo child had turned the hourglass by delivering her message. Everything was just as it was before. I guess that means the lesser evil. The Oracle and the Orange Clan went back to their places of power in the secret government of the world, and the Purple Clan went back to haunting us on the net. I should be happy, I guess. I've been living with Carla for three months. She's the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. Yesterday, she told me that she's pregnant. It must have been that night in Bogart's underground base. That means that our child was radiated by the chrome at Wishita, just like I was in my mother's womb. I don't know what's going to happen now. I'm the one and only keeper of the greatest secret in the universe. What should I do with all that power? Forget it? Put it in the service of humanity? I've never dreamt about being a god. I just want to live my life like anybody else with my wife and my child. I'm afraid that destiny might have another path in mind for me. What are you thinking about, Lucas? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all.